Hi everyone, this is Sybil and I am here for the second part of the Copic Questions Answered series. And first off, thank you so much for everyone that watched the first part and left um, wonderful encouraging comments. And also for your questions that I've received again in private messages as well as in the comments. And um, I wanted to share a few things with you and the first thing is that before I purchased Copics, I researched all different types of markers um, for about a year. And during this time is when I asked a lot of questions to Tracy and to Jan, the two ladies that I mentioned in my previous video in this series. And um, I researched Spectrum Noirs, Distress Markers, um, all different types, even Stampin' Up! markers, and and I decided with the Copic markers, I watched a lot of tutorials, um, even before I had any, you know, and I'm just trying to f see if that was what I wanted to go with. I knew they were more expensive, but um, as far as for artwork and things like that, they were highly, highly recommended. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with those. And um, some of you ladies have shared with me that the Copic markers have made you feel overwhelmed, you know, as you're starting to color and intimidated. And I felt the same way, even after having done research. And so I wanted to share with you that, um, you know, when you first start coloring, it, it doesn't, it's not that easy. You don't get all the techniques um, unless you just haven't had talent um, and, you know, sit down and bam, there it is. But for most of us, we have to learn the techniques and um, we get a little bit frustrated because, you know, it takes a while to learn those techniques. And so I am going to encourage you to practice, practice, and practice and to play, play, play. So first, before I go a little bit more into that, I wanted to share with you my images because several of you have wrote to me and said, I would love to color like you. Well, I want you to know um, I started somewhere and here's my very first image. <laughs> and um, not so great, no shading. And I'm not sure if you can see all the blotchiness on her skin. And um, yeah, not, not good at all, even on her, her dress. It's real blotchy, and I think sometimes our cameras do our images, well, you know, do them a favor and make them look even better than they they look in person, because then when we look at them in person, I'm like, oh my lord. Um, and so, yeah, this, this was pretty bad. I went out of the lines, you know, and, um, but you start somewhere, and this is where I started. And then... I went from that image to this image, so I stayed in the lines and I realized that if I did darker color on the outside, just like I did when I was a kid in coloring with color grounds, and lighter on the inside, you had your shading, you know, and that's what you're going for is your, your light and your shadows and your cast shadows, and the more that you learn, um, about Copic coloring, the more natural that will come to you. And not at first, you know, I really struggled at first, so I decided I would take a large image like this and color it. And um, so when I was coloring this, you don't see much in the shading. The darker here is actually the image, the print from the stamp itself. But what this image did for me is help me to get the natural feel of the marker in my hand. So therefore, not only was I practicing, I was just kind of playing and getting the feel of it. And that's very important because then you become more comfortable with it. And then I did this one and you can see 
that I actually did a little bit more shading on this. And I thought, hey, you know, I'm kind of getting that. And then I did this image and went right back to the beginning. <laughs> but um, on this, I realized that if I made the tips of the hair darker, it made this part lighter. So, see, you start somewhere and then a few months down the road, several months down the road, and, and I would color for a while and then get, you know, frustrated, overwhelmed, and then I'd just stop. And then I'd come back a few months later or whatever, a month later, and a few weeks later and color again. And so one night I was sitting in my recliner and I just wanted to relax and I just wanted to color with the abandonment that I had as I did as a child. And that is what I did. I colored for me, for the sheer joy. And when I did that, it started clicking. It started to come together. And I just practiced all different types of techniques on this little guy. And it came together. Now, I did some more on here. Again, the shirt is not shaded but I started doing different colors on the hair and learning how to do that. Learned how to use my blender pen to cause some shading and shadowing on the shoes here. And so um, I think one of the biggest things I could tell you is to, like I said, practice. Practice doesn't make perfect. None of us are perfect, but we can become better with practice and more comfortable. And then as we play, we have fun. And if you're coloring and you feel stressed and overwhelmed because it's just not getting right or it doesn't look like this person's or that person's, then you need to just step back and take a breather because you're not having fun. And um, don't compare yourself and your coloring, especially when you first start out, to anybody else. And I would suggest that you don't compare your coloring to anybody else all the way along this Copic journey. There is nothing wrong with admiring other people's work, but I think that um, we lose the joy and the fun of coloring when we um, compare ourselves because then we find fault in what we're doing and we don't feel that we're good enough and that's just not the case the case is that we're learning and we'll get there one day you know and our work our artwork is exactly that it's ours and I love to watch videos tutorials of Copic coloring and I pick up some tips here and there, but I know that my coloring won't look the same as theirs, and that's okay. I've given myself a license to not compare myself and to enjoy what I'm doing. That is my biggest um, tip that I could give to you. As you're learning all the different techniques, don't forget to practice, don't forget to have fun, don't forget to take a breather, and not compare yourself. Okay, and then I'm also asked about how to store your markers. Now, you can see that my markers are, you know, stored horizontally like this, but you can actually store markers vertically. It doesn't matter. I had mine in a bag, sitting up in a Michaels bag, um, in a divider bag, for a long time, um, till I moved here and I purchased these Copic cubbies and I wanted these cubbies because when I, once I got all the markers it was too difficult for me to carry my bag around and um, also I didn't have as much ease as finding which particular markers I was looking for and in here I have them I have them divided by their color families and so that's the other thing I'm asked is which Copic colors do I recommend that you get? Now when I first started, part of the reason this very first image um, was so blotchy, well several of my images were real blotchy, is because I did not, um, I did not space 
the colors, if you will. I used E quadruple zero, E triple zero, and E double zero. There was no space in between, so it didn't lend itself well to blending. And so now I have learned that you want to color with spaces, if you will, in between your the numbers of the family, the color family that you're using. So now one of my favorite color combos to use that I go to a lot is E50, E51, E53. And I have a couple of Copic process videos that I've shared um, coloring with these. You start with the E50, you go to the E53 for shading, and then you bring your E51 as your midtone and you go back to E50 to blend it together. Um, R20 is a fantastic blush color when you're first starting out and all the way continuing. And um, I would recommend, and this is just me personally, you know, um, the E, the earth tone families, you, the family, there is such, um, a range of colors within the E family. You will have light skin tone, you will have colors for Asian, you will have colors for um, dark skin tone, uh, let's see, like um, people that have like a pink undertone, you will find that with your E's. With a yellow undertone, you will find that with your E's. And also you have colors here in the E family for red hair, brunette hair, blonde hair, ash blonde, and like I said, all the different skin tones there. And then um, another color to bring in that is really good is YR20. It's a yellowish shade and that also is great. You can use that on skin tones, but you can use that especially for hair. Um, and so I think I'm going to Oh, oh, I'm going to share this one last thing. Sometimes when you are coloring, um, you may be coloring and say your image is half colored. I've had this happen to me a lot, especially when I was in Louisiana. And then my pen would just like spill out, you know, like blah, a, ben, a big ink spot. And the reason is, oops, sorry, that at the Copic marker manufacturer, oftentimes they overfill the markers, and so a pressure starts to build up. So they ship them from the manufacturer to the store, and whether it's an online store or you know a, a regular craft store, and you purchase them, the pressure builds up in the barrel, and so all you have to do is take off both ends off the chisel and off the super nib and you're just going to set your brush there for a while and it's going to equalize that pressure and then you're going to want to dab off the excess off the super brush nib let it sit there for you know maybe three to five minutes put your um, cap back on and you can continue on and yeah I know sometimes it ruins your image but yeah that's that's what happens and I did want to share with you that if you are um, a follower of my craft Facebook, it's Sybil Stevens is with a P H E N S is my craft channel on my craft Facebook. And I share on there different sales from Carpe Diem and they just had a sale. It's ended. It ended on the 23rd that you could get Copic sketch markers for $3.99. Well, they've extended the sale. They've raised the price up a little bit, but it's still fantastic. $4.19 at carpediem.com. Free ship over $35, and that is U.S. They don't ship out internationally, and so that is U.S. Um, but I did purchase some extra Copic markers. These are new markers from a local scrapbook store that is going out of business. And several of you are just starting out. And when I come to the end of this video series, or maybe to the middle, I'm going to send some of you fantastic subbies and Copic lovers um, some of these basic skin tones. I don't have a whole lot. They didn't have a whole lot, but they were half price. And I wanted to pass on the Copic love to my friends and subbies. So that's it for this series. 
Um, for part two, I'm going to do a part three and share how to clean your markers and how to refill them. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.